Okay, before we go live, um, I just wanted to touch base with Brett. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to see if she... Absolute. That don't mean I got to walk and chew bubble gum and do a, a rule saying, let me go get my script that just got stolen from me. <laughs> <laughs> Medefa, do you need to check with me? Yeah, me? I just wanted to see if you had any words or for counsel, if you wanted to check uh, with the participants before we get started. Uh, so also just how the hearing is going to go. I'm not sure if everyone is aware. We do have a couple individuals signed up for public comment, but just for the ease of calling them in, we are going to have public comment after the administration testifies on um, all the bills. Um, is there should we get a mic check for uh the test the, the witnesses that are testifying from the administration paula does it work i heard you uh does uh is the court report okay. yes she was clear and audible thanks and uh dennis murphy i'm here Good morning. How was that? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, he I can. He was clear. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, if the council member has his script prepared and the other council members are ready, I think we are ready to go, Modesto. Modesto, before we go, okay, this is Councilwoman Bass. I'm oh. sorry, this is Councilwoman Bass for my check. Okay, perfect. Yes, your audio sounds good. How's that sound to you? Yes, and she was clear. Okay, great. It looks like uh, channel 64 is ready to go. We are now live. Good morning, everyone. This meeting of the Rules Committee is now called to order. I understand that state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every remote public hearing as follows. Due to the current public health emergency, city council committees are currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instructions for how the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of council committees are included in the public hearing notices that are published in the Daily News, Enquirer, and Legal Intelligence prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. Would a clerk please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate that they are present when their names are called. Also, please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Mark Squilla. Present here for the Rules Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. David O. David O. And back. Good morning. I am present. I think you said Cindy Bass. Good morning. Yeah, I am present. Good morning, I'm here, thank you. Bobby Heenan. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, colleagues. Maria Quinona Sanchez. Buenos dias, buenos dias. Curtis Jones, Jr. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, a listening and viewing audience. Brian O'Neill. And that is it for the roll, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brett. Oh, did you call David O? I might not have heard that. I I am here. My Wi-Fi was going in and out. Thank you very much. A quorum of the committee is present and the hearing is now called to order. This is the public hearing of the committee on rules regarding bills number 200018, 
200160, 200161, and 200260. Would the clerk please read the titles of the bills? 200018. Amending Title 21 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Miscellaneous by adding a new chapter 21-3200 entitled Business Improvement Districts and Special Service Districts to establish uniform procedures for the filing of objections by affected property owners against the formation of business improvement districts and special services districts, all under certain terms and conditions. 200094. Amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning to revise certain provisions of Section 14-500 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Overlay Zoning Districts by modifying the Center City Overlay District, Society Hill area to create additional standards concerning height, parking, signs, and special reviews and making related changes all under certain terms and conditions. 200095 to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Walnut Street, Front Street, South Street, and 8th Street, all under certain terms and conditions. 200144, to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain portions of land located within an area bounded by Oxford Street, 19th Street, Poplar Street, and 27th Street, all under certain terms and conditions. 200160, amending section 14-203 of the Philadelphia Code entitled definitions by adding a definition for site clearing, further amending section 14-704 entitled open space and natural resources by making technical changes to regulations regarding development on steep slopes and amending title four subcode A of the Philadelphia Building Code all under certain terms and conditions. 200161, to amend the Philadelphia zoning map by changing the zoning designation of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Main Street, Ridge Avenue, Wissahickon Creek, and the Schofield River in Osborne Street. 200260, amending Title IV, subcode A of the Philadelphia Building Code to revise certain provisions of chapter three permits and amending title 14 of the Philadelphia code entitled zoning and planning to revise certain provisions of chapter 14-300 entitled administration and procedures by amending the terms and conditions of administrative review all under certain terms and conditions. And that is the agenda. Before we begin to hear testimony from the witnesses we have for today, Everyone who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is, is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in this meeting, you are considering to being recorded. Additionally, prior to recognizing members for the questions or comments they have for witnesses, I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft Teams to allow our members to signify that they wish to be recognized. In order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this purpose. Will the clerk please call the first panel for bill number 200018. Janice Murphy. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the Rules Committee. My name is Dennis Murphy. I'm the Senior Director of Corridor Development within the Department of Commerce. I'm here to testify in support of Bill Number 200018. The proposed legislation clarifies the process for property owners who wish to oppose the creation of an improvement district. This legislation will make it easier for the Chief Clerk of Council to accurately tally the number of property owner objections, and it makes the process of filing an objection clearer for property owners. Thank you for your consideration, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from members of the committee? No questions at this time. 
Is there anyone else here to testify on the bill whose name has not been not yet been called? Hearing none. Well, thank you very much for your testimony. Hearing none, would a clerk please call the next panel? Paula from Lowburns. Good morning. Excuse me, one second, Paula. Um, clerk, just for the record, can you? Let me just clarify. This is for bill number two zero zero nine four. For the record, go ahead. You can now begin to proceed with your testimony. Just state your name um, and title for the record, please. Okay. Good morning, Chairperson Johnson and members of the Rules Committee. I'm Paula Brumblow Burns, City Planner with the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number Two Zero 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 Nine Four, which was introduced into City Council on January 30th, 2020, by Council Member Squilla. Bill Number Two Zero 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 Nine Four impacts the Society Hill area of the Center City Overlay. The first change is the creation of the Northeast area within Society Hill which is the area bounded by Walnut Street, 4th Street, Willings Alley, 3rd Street, Thomas Payne Place, Dock Street, and 2nd Street. The bill sets new regulations on height by placing a maximum height in the Northeast sub area to 65 feet, regardless of the zoning district. The bill then limits the height of CMX2 parcels with three street frontages to 45 feet instead of the permitted 55 feet of the code to the rest of Society Hill. Society Hill area as a whole included several changes that include parking, use, and sign requirements. Parking requirements will be put in place for RM1 parcels that will increase the requirement from none required to three spaces for every 10 units. Signage is proposed to have significant changes and more review required by the Art Commission. The bill proposes that no sign shall be erected or maintained in Society Hill area unless approved by the Art Commission and gives them 60 days to take action. The following sign types will be prohibited. Signs with internal illumination, animated illumination, freestanding signs, non-accessory signs, projecting signs, and mechanical movement. The maximum area for signs is significantly reduced in commercial districts and only permits one sign per building frontage. The staff of the Planning Commission will now have to complete facade reviews for building permits prior to building or altering a facade within the Society Hill area northeast. This bill will also exempt the Society Hill area from the recently passed regulations that allowed properties to lower the minimum parking requirements that are locally designated historic or that contribute to local historic districts. Additionally, it allows for local historic properties zoned residentially or CMX1, CMX2, or CMX2.5 that meet certain criteria to have the uses as permitted in the CMX3 district. The bill is a reintroduction of bill number 190830, which was introduced by Council Member School on October 31st, 2019. The Planning Commission considered Bill Number 190830 at its meeting of November 19, 2019, and recommended that it not be approved. The st staff believes that that bill creates unnecessary overlay restrictions and exempts one neighborhood from multiple historic preservation measures that were added to the Zoning Code by City Council after the two-year Historic Preservation Task Force process. Additionally, the bill assigns new reviews to the Planning Commission while not increasing the number of staff available for the reviews. The City Planning Commission at its meeting of August 18th, 2020, recommended Bill Number 200094 not be approved. I will be happy to answer any questions at this time. Councilman any Johnson, Councilmember Squilla. Go ahead, go ahead Thank Councilman Squilla. Thank you for your testimony, and uh, I do want to reiterate that you know we've been working on this for well over two years uh this bill at nine five uh which is a remapping bill uh we've made multiple changes in, in both bills and um you know being on the historic task force and with support of the preservation society for this bill 
Um, the 65 height limit, 65 foot height limit, also is a height limit that all that does is bring the developer in that area in the historic district to the community if it's going to be higher than 65 feet. So it's not like you can never have a building higher than 65 feet. They would just need a variance at that point. We also um, had strong support from the uh, um, park services um, for this being in a, in a historic area. Uh, we did make changes to the boundaries to map uh, the historic boundaries of, of Society Hill, and it's only a small area, as you read out. Um, so it doesn't take in all of Society Hill. It just takes in that small area facing Walnut Street from uh, 2nd to 4th. Um, so uh, during that time, I know we really tried hard to get everybody to agree uh, and, and get a consensus, but on, uh, as you'll hear on 200095, uh, we were able to do that through remapping and get everybody on board uh, to agree. But in this bill, we um, we just worked really hard to try to do that, but uh, planning had still not agreed. But I, I recommend with the work from the Civic Association and, and the community and the Preservation Alliance and the Park Services that we believe that this bill um, um, should be passed and uh, willing to continue to work with um, uh, developers or people coming in. Um, any development that we've seen uh, that was proposed for these sites um, has not been something, that most of them were high-end condos and uh, other things that would be there uh, that would be able to work with the community on a, a variance or setbacks, or whatever would be needed to get a project to go over 65 feet. So we believe that this that this bill is, is warranted and being uh, in a historic district uh, is something that we support. So uh, thank you and thanks planning. Uh, we worked with them really hard on this and um, uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Councilman Squilla. Any other questions or comments from members of the committee? Yeah, this is Councilwoman Sanchez. Thank you, um, Councilman Squilla, for that clarification. That really helped um, as someone who's going through similar situations, trying to balance out and shaping and ensuring community participation in some of this over overlays or the remapping. Um, I appreciate the fact that you um, have included some of the feedback from the residents. I have a question for the record. How does this impact the mixed income bonus? Um, and if we could put that on the record, that would, I would greatly appreciate it uh, as it relates to affordability. Uh, the mixed income bonus will give you more density uh, for a certain project. That uh, pull out, I think I'll maybe throw that back to you. Uh, uh, the mixed income bonus on 65 feet height limit. It will not prohibit applicants from applying for it but the 65 foot height limit in a zone such as CMX3 will limit a height and create a height district or a height limit where it's normally regulated by FAR, which could possibly impact with having a maximum height, send something to the zoning board and they may or may not get a variance. So it could possibly have a negative impact on the number of units or the number or the amount of money that they would pay for the mixed income bonus. It could have that impact. So Councilman Squilla, um, how do people in, the, in this particular area feel around the affordability issue in light of everything that's going on? And can you, uh, you know, you've been a supporter of this, you're a supporter of the bill, you've been a supporter. How do we make sure that when, if and when a developer goes into, um, to ask for a zoning variance, that affordability clause that I wish was mandatory now more than ever, how do we make sure that in this that we protect the spirit of the bill around an inclusive mixed income neighborhood? Well, I, I could use an example. In, in Old City, we have a 65 foot height limit. We did 205 Ray Street. 205 Ray Street was one of the first ones that included the affordability bonus in that project. And um, you know, <laughs> as a, a council member, we I, I do I push that on every project that we have and uh, really work hard to make sure that's included in majority of projects. If it's not included in the project, then Hosley paid to the housing trust fund. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, with me, it's a, a big priority. And, um, and we believe in the, in every community, I believe in every community, uh, that mixed income housing should be part of any new development. Again, it's not mandatory and maybe that's something we together could work on. Um, but um, uh, I believe that it's either should be included or there should be money to uh, the, 
um, trust fund uh, in every new development. So, I mean, I'd be willing to work with you on that. I'm not sure that this bill will guarantee every project have that, but I think if we create something in council that would make it mandatory for development, I think that would that would uh, override anything here. We Thank tried. you so much. And I, I don't doubt your commitment at all. I just want the spirit of the residents of Society Hill for folks to know that now more than ever, the affordability mixed income component is important. I know it's important to you, but I, I want them to hear um, at least from people like me and other council members, that this is a priority for us. Um, and it's important one with these high value pieces of land where density is going to be discussed through a community process that we don't lose sight of that. And I appreciate all your work, as you know, um, in our work together on, on this issue. But I want it on the record that, you know, mixed income neighborhoods will not happen by themselves. They have, we have to be intentional and deliberate um, and, you know, Society Hill is a neighborhood that uh, we, where we don't have the level of affordability that we should. And we, we, we need to make sure that people understand that that is the spirit by which your council colleagues support you on, on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council thank Member. You. Thank you. And thank you, Councilman Squiller. Any other questions and comments from members of the committee? Is there anyone else here to testify? on the bill whose name has not yet been called. Hearing none, thank you very much. Would a clerk please call the next panel for bill number 20095. Paula Brumblow Burns for 20095. Paula, good morning. Good morning, Chairperson Johnson and members of the Rules Committee. I am Paula Brumblow Burns, City Planner with the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number 200095, which was introduced into City Council on January 30th, 2020, by Council Member Squilla. Bill Number 200095 amends the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain portions of land located within an area bounded by changing the zoning. Sorry, I have that sentence twice. An area bounded by Walnut Street, Front Street, South Street, and 8th Street. The Planning Commission used its 45-day option in February 2020 to give Planning Commission staff, Council Member Squilla, and the Society Hill Civic Association more time to work towards amendments agreeable to all parties. The bill correctively rezones parcels that front on Washington Square, along with adjusting parcels between RSA 5 and RM1 to match current land uses. In July 2020, a series of nine amendments were agreed upon by all parties. These amendments lessen the impact of the bill on housing affordability. Therefore, the City Planning Commission at its meeting of August 18th, 2020, recommended bill number 200095 be approved with amendments. I will be happy to answer questions at this time. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions Thank you. from members of the committee? Councilman Squilla. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and I again want to thank the Planning Commission for working with us on this. And uh, as I stated earlier, a two-year process, and it was a lot of give and go uh, back and forth. And uh, you know, it, it was um, very well done. And the outreach from the planning and the time that they put into this uh, was amazing. So uh, I want to thank them for all their hard work and uh, appreciate their uh, level of response to us and the community uh, to come up with a, a plan that was agreed on by all. So uh, great job. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilman O'Neill, yes. I have another meeting pre scheduled before this coming out of uh, um, it's a nationally scheduled meeting and uh, I would like to be recorded as I on all bills and res all bills on the on the calendar. Absolutely. Good morning, Councilman O'Neill. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and uh, congratulations, uh, Councilman Squilla. Hard work. Okay. Any other questions and comments of members of the committee? Anyone else here to testify on bill number 200095, whose name has not been called yet? Thank you very much. Will the clerk please call the next panel for bill number 200144. 
Paula Brumblow. Hello again. Good morning. I'm Paula Brumblow Burns, City Planner with the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number Two Zero Zero One Four Four, which was introduced into City Council on February Thirteenth, Twenty Twenty, by Council Member Parker on behalf of Cres Council President Clark. Bill Number Two Zero Zero One Four Four amends the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain portions of land located within an area bounded by Oxford Street, 19th Street, Poplar Street, and 27th Street. The zoning changes are within a small, smaller area bounded by 24th Street, Jefferson Street, 25th Street, and Thompson Street. The proposed bill will change the zoning designations from primarily residential multifamily RM1 to single family residential RSA5. This was a request from the Brewery Town Sharswood Community Civic Association. The rezoning will conform to the recommendations in the city's comprehensive plan. The Philadelphia City Planning Commission considered bill number 200144 at its meeting of June 16th, 2020 and recommended it for approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Chairman, you are on mute. If we have a question or comments from, from members of the committee. Hearing none, is there anyone else whose name has not been called that would like to testify on this bill? Hearing none, thank you very much. Will the clerk please call the next panel for bill number 200160. And before I um, the panel come up. I want to acknowledge Councilman Curtis Jones, who is the sponsor of this bill, as well as the next bill that will be called up, which is Bill Number Two Zero Zero One Six One. Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, members of the committee. Um, what this hearing today acknowledges, in spite of uh, COVID nineteen, in spite of a, uh, a civil uh, unrest, in spite of um, uh, economic depression, we are planting the seeds for the recovery of Philadelphia. These um, development, potential development and rezoning issues are um, seeds that will bear fruit by way of goods and service provided to the public, but also tax revenues provided to the city in light of the projected deficits we will face next budget cycle. Um, these two bills that I put forth, uh, one of them uh, deals with an issue called steep slopes. Um, I want to thank my members that went along for the bike ride uh, last week. Uh, uh, and we went up hills, down hills that were steep slopes. That's so, why I know. Right. <laughs> Listen, I understand. We will send you pictures. Um, but we um, realized that when you build impervious surfaces on steep slopes and combine that with rain, that water has to go somewhere. And it's usually downhill. And it's usually into um, our overburdened dual lateral sewer systems. It is also the creation of uh, land erosion. And so by prohibiting these um, or question these kind of developments on steep slopes in Roxborough, in Manium, in other parts of my district, we are taking a second look as to how that land should be utilized. The reason why we have trees is to prevent erosion. And so that's one of the bills presented today. The second one is a little more of a housekeeping issue, Mr. Chairman. When we revamped um, the zoning code and try to make it more predictable for both developers and also RCOs to be able to say this is the type of use that is permitted in this particular parcel or area that was designed to give predictability. What we did not do and what was the unintended consequences was some of the parcels such as on Main Street 
uh, were grandfathered in from an industrial time when we had factories and mills and things like that. Right there on the same parcel where there used to be factories and mills is now a, a movie theater, various restaurants and eateries and uh, a wine and spirits. In order for that parcel to be developed retail-wise, we need to update and right-size the zoning so that it'll allow for commercial development other than industrial. What it also prohibits is residential development. So it's something good for uh, the owners of the mall and potential individuals looking to open businesses, but it also safeguards and protects the community, uh, the same community we rode through uh, our members uh, to make sure that there is not overdevelopment in those areas that impacts both traffic and parking. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for your consideration of these bills. Thank you very much, um, Councilman Curtis Jones. And um, I just want to acknowledge you for your athleticism and keeping our council members and colleagues fit. Because if you're not biking, you're also on the Schuylkill River doing regatta, you know, and rowing and getting council members um, fit and in shape. So keep up the good work. Um, at this time, I want to ask for the clerk to please call the panel for bill number 200160. Paula Brumbler Burns. Good morning, I'm Paula Brumbler Burns, city planner with the development division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on bill number 200160, which was introduced into city council on February 20th, 2020 by council member Jones. Bill number 200160 amends section 14-203 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Definitions. By adding a definition for site clearing and further amending section 14-704 entitled Open Space and Natural Resources by making technical changes to regulations regarding development on steep slopes. The bill originally amended Title IV Subcode A of the Philadelphia Building Code and all under certain terms and conditions. This bill seeks to strengthen regulations in the city's steep slope protection areas. Steep slope protection areas are located within the open space and natural resources section of the code. Open space and natural resources standards are intended to promote safe and compatible development throughout the city of Philadelphia that avoids adverse impacts and degradation of the environment through open space preservation, protection of steep slopes, erosion control, and water quality protection. The city steep slope protection area SSPA is mapped in areas adjacent to the city's major rivers and streams, Delaware, Schuylkill, Wistahickon, Kennypack, Tucane, Tacony, Cobbs. Protections apply in all zoning districts to slopes of 15% or greater. Specifically, this bill seeks to close loopholes in the code that allow developers to clear wooded slopes greater than 15% without a permit. It creates a new site clearing permit, lower square footage triggers for review, and makes administrative amendments to the code for greater clarity. The City Planning Commission does offer one amendment to the bill today. It is to clarify that the Water Department will perform an existing resource and site analysis plan for properties over 5,000 square feet. The bill proposed 14 40 square feet, but it has gone back to 5,000 square feet, and that is what is under Title IV, Subcode A. Staff from the City Planning Commission, LNI, and Water worked on this bill with representatives from Council Member Jones's office, community groups in Roxborough, and friends of the Wissahicka. The City Planning Commission, at its meeting of June 16, 2020, recommended Bill Number 200160 for approval. I will be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you very much, Paula. Any other questions or comments from members of the committee? Mr. Chair? Yes, Catherine Gilmore-Richardson, you're recognized. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to thank my district council member, Council Member Jones, uh, for this bill to really strengthen the regulations for our steep slope protection areas, which we were able to see up close and personal during the bike ride at the fourth council district, uh, starting in Roxborough all the way down through Manny Young, uh, but also working on ways to protect our environment. I think this is important and I'll be happy to support this legislation. Thank you, Council Member Jones. And additionally, I wanted to add the wooded slopes are very important because we have wooded slope areas also in Winfield. Uh, so we thank you so much for this legislation. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments of members of the committee? Anyone else here to testify on this particular bill? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the next panel for bill number 200161. Paula Brumblow Burns. Good morning. It's Paula Brumblow Burns, city planner with the development division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I am here to testify on bill number 200161, which was introduced into city council on February 20th, 2020 by council member Jones. Bill number 200161 amends the Philadelphia zoning maps by remapping an area bounded by Main Street, Ridge Avenue, Wissahickon Creek, the Schuylkill River, and Osborne Street Extended. The bill seeks to correctively rezone the Manny Young Crossings Shopping Center at the intersection of Ridge Avenue and Main Street from I-1 Industrial to ICMX Industrial Commercial Mixed Use. It will allow the owner of the property to fill commercial spaces with commercial tenants as needed and build new commercial pad sites to meet the shopping needs of the surrounding neighborhood. This remapping is consistent with the recommendations of the Wissahickon Get Gateway Plan. That plan recommends a near-term remapping of the property to ICMX and long-term remapping to CMX3 commercial mixed use to allow for transit-oriented development adjacent to the soon-to-be-expanded Wissahickon Transportation Center. The City Planning Commission at its meeting of June 16, 2020, recommended bill number 200161 for approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you very much, Paula. Any questions and comments from members of the committee? Anyone else here to testify on this bill? Hearing none, will the clerk Please call the next panel for bill number 200260. Paula Brumblow Burns. Good morning. I am Paula Brumblow Burns, City Planner with the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I am here today to testify on bill 200260, which was introduced into City Council on March 12th. 2020 by council member Squilla. Bill number 200260 amends the Philadelphia Zoning Code by amending title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning to revise certain provisions of chapter 14-300 entitled Administration and Procedures by amending the terms and conditions of administrative review. This legislation extends the period for which administrative review can be applied to a zoning permit from 180 days to the life of the permit. This will allow for minor changes that do not increase the intensity of the permit to be considered by Department of License and Inspections. The Philadelphia City Planning Commission considered bill number 200260 at its meeting of May 19, 2020 and recommended its approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any questions and comments from members of the committee? Hearing none, anyone else here to testify on this bill? Okay, hearing none, at this time we will take a brief break to allow members of the public who have registered for public comment to join this virtual meeting. So we're going to take a break and Lottie and Modesto are going to um, set things up for public comment on these bills.
Lonnie, this is Councilman Kenyatta Johnson. All is well? Yes, Councilman. Um, we're actually going out and we got our team calling out uh, the participants. So That's as cool. soon as everyone is ready to go, we will we will get back to you. Okay, just checking in. Okay, great. Thank you. We're actually doing it from another virtual session. So as um, soon as everything's done, then we will uh, coordinate with Channel 64 and get back to you. Thank you.
Council Chair, we are now live. Mr. Council Chair, your microphone is on mute. Thank you very much. We will now hear the testimony of those who have signed up for the public comment. The clerk will call your name and you will unmute yourself using star six. Once called, please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. For the sake of time, if you have written testimony for individuals not present, please send it to Brett Nickelkoff in my office and she will distribute it to the committee members and it can be sent to B-R-E-T-T dot N-E-D-E-L-K-O-F-F at Phila dot gov. Thank you very much. Will the clerk please call the first witness? Larry Spector commenting on bill number 20094 and bill number 200095. Thank you. Uh, I'm president of the Society Hill Civic Association. Uh, these two bills are based on a master plan that our association took several years, a great deal of community input to create. Uh, they took a great deal of patience from Councilman Squilla, and I first want to thank him for his hard work and support. I want to highlight three components of the overlay bill, which is the bill ending in 9-4. Uh, let's focus on uh, the fact that it creates a 65-foot height limit in just one small but important part of our neighborhood. We're talking about the 200 and 300 blocks of Walnut Street. Um, the 200 block of Walnut Street is directly across from Independence National Park and it's truly magnificent Merchants Exchange building. Uh, that building's a National Historic Landmark. It's the oldest stock exchange building in the country. It's now owned by the Park Service. It's rectangular with a three-story limestone structure attached to a perfectly curved and proportioned portico with a beautiful Greek Corinthian colonnade. Uh, it's beautifully recreated. Uh, streetscape consists of a plaza of cobblestone running to the rear of this historic city tavern and another nationally designated landmark, the First Bank of the United States. The point here is that the scale of the Merchants Exchange Building and the comparable scale of the properties across the street form a seamless connection from the National Park to the historic neighborhood of Society Hill. And this is a, a, a neighborhood where the architecture largely conforms to a low rise scale and echoes the scale of the buildings in the park. The problem and the reason for the 65 foot height limit is that tall buildings dwarfing the Merchants Exchange and towering over Walnut Street would be completely destroying the scale of that area. They would eliminate the seamless connection of the neighborhood to the national park the question then is well why should we care about such an intangible thing as scale the reason is that it is the scale of the streetscape that reflects this history of colonial america when tall buildings were not feasible society hill in general and independence park especially in that block are really a treasure of colonial history they're the front entrance to historic philadelphia People come from all over the world to tour our neighborhood using buses, walking tours, carriage tours, Sedgway tours, and they look out at eye level on the historic character of the streetscape. They don't come to look at high rise buildings. And because of what they see in Society Hill and the surrounding park, they have spent millions of dollars in hotels, meals, and related activity in Philadelphia. And we have to give priority to the historic preservation of that scale to make sure that they do that again when we all come out of this pandemic. Um, if you look at other cities with comparable historic districts, all have similar height limits. That's true of Baltimore, Boston, Georgetown in, in uh, DC. Even our own old city has a 65 foot height limit. Please understand, we're not against change. Uh, we're not against high rise development. We're certainly not against mixed income development. Uh, we have a lot of high rises, at least eight in Society Hill. There'll be another five to 10 uh, high rises nearby in our district when the recent Durst proposal for Penn's Landing comes to fruition. What we care about and what we're doing here is trying to promote good development. And that means considering the context of the streetscape when planning tall buildings. 
uh, without this bill, we're surely going to get high-rise development. And what kind will we get? Uh, anyone who tunes into the grapevine, uh, the developer community knows that it's not going to be anything that provides affordable housing. It's going to be luxury apartments or luxury condominiums. Uh, so we think that buildings in this stretch should not go higher than 65 feet. That's a suitable height to balance the desire for development and the historic character of the area. Uh, much more briefly, I want to touch on two other components of the overlay. Parking uh, with tourism, South Street, Penn's Landing, Spruce Harbor Park. The parking squeeze in Society Hill is just beyond the critical limits. Uh, people don't come to these areas on bicycles or the subway. Uh, they come in cars. So we're, all we're asking is to restore some modest parking requirements and only for developments with more than three units. Uh, for example, a six unit building would need two spaces. Existing non-conforming properties are grandfathered. And finally on this bill, uh, the historic preservation incentive. There was a recent historic preservation ordinance intended to create an incentive not to demolish decaying historic buildings. It's, it's really targeting churches and other structures that could not be renovated and redeveloped economically because doing so, uh, redeveloping them would require following use and parking requirements of the zoning code. So it instead in encourages restoration by allowing any such property to be used in any of the ways of a CMX property and eliminates any parking requirements that might otherwise apply. Uh, but really in our neighborhood, it could only backfire uh, because the CMX3 de designation would allow uses really out of left field for many historic properties in our neighborhood that are not in any uh, decaying condition, yet they could then be used for anything from antenna towers, marijuana dispensaries, or other uses without parking that would otherwise never be allowed in a residential uh, neighborhood. Uh, we really don't need a broad sweeping law covering hundreds of properties if only a particular building is an issue. If necessary, the developer can seek a variance. Um, that would be my testimony on Bill 20094. Uh, going quickly to 20095, which is the remapping. Uh, as you know, uh, a remapping of all city parcels was required under the new uh, zoning classifications, and uh, neighborhood associations were asked to remap in conformity with the new zoning code. Uh, we did a lot of work on that and a lot of work with the Planning Commission, and we thank them for their countless hours and their patience in working with us on this. We ended up coming up with a corrective remapping of some of the lots in Society Hill, and the result is that we're presenting a bill today that we think balances the need for corrective zoning with the goals of the uh, Planning Department. Um, there are another 270 people who would support what I'm saying today. We did have a petition which uh, was signed in connection with the original submission of the bill, which I will submit again in an appropriate manner. Uh, all of these people hope, and I hope that you will also hope or approve of uh, these bills that allow a proper balance between the need of, for development and the need for historic preservation. Uh, with that, and, and a thank you again uh, to Councilman Squilla, who has very painstakingly engaged in this process, uh, and to the Planning Commission, which did the same. That concludes my testimony. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. Councilman Squilla, would you like to make a comment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I too want to uh, uh, thank uh, Mr. Spector um, for a lot of the hard work with uh, Mary uh, Frizzell and other members of, of the community uh, who really engaged a lot of time and effort in this. And I know, you know, not everybody got everything they wanted, obviously, and uh, there's still a lot of members of the community that's upset. But, you know, when you work through these processes, compromises are necessary in order to make a, a, a project work or a plan work. And, um, you know, we tried our best and we worked hard. And, you know, <clears throat> this will still, like I said earlier, it will still be a process, any new development, if, if they do come in and, and need to do things in those areas, 
we'll meet with the community and go through a variance process. So uh, I want to thank everybody who participated. And I know it was a long time coming and we'll probably hear some more testimony. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments, members of the committee? Will the clerk please call the next witness? Bruce Holberg commenting on bill number 200094. Bruce Holberg. Hello. How you doing, Bruce? Just say your name and you can proceed with your, your Thanks. testimony. Thanks. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Bruce Holberg. I am the uh, president of the Society Hill Towers Owners Association. And we're very thankful to be able to participate in this important discussion today. It's, uh, uh, it's regarding a small area of Philadelphia, but it's a very, very important uh, area. It's determining the essence of a key district of the city, and that would be Society Hill. Our thoughts very much align with those that you just heard uh, from, uh, from uh, Larry Spector, uh, almost down the line. You know, we, we think about Society Hill and how we describe it to out-of-towners or members of our family who don't live here. And we use words like historical and charming and residential and visitor-friendly. And we believe that this scale, uh, this low-rise scale, underpins all of those and allows, allows it to happen. The area in question, as, uh, as Mr. Spector said, uh, in most places faces Independence Park and its historical buildings. And it's our position that whatever construction is done should enhance this sense of history and not compete with it. At Society Hill Towers, we have a, uh, a unique set of uh, concerns as well. The 1,300 residents here are fully cognizant that the towers was created as a beacon for, South, uh, for Society Hill development back in the 60s. Uh, the towers were carefully designed by IM Pay. It was never designed with the idea of just being one of many high rises in a whole gaggle of them. It is a historical site. It is an iconic site and it deserves to be respected as such. You know, this is an if only moment. Uh, if development is allowed to destroy the essence of Society Hill with lots of overshadowing, uh, out of context buildings, future generations are, are gonna say, if only someone could have controlled this while they could, we would think that this is that moment. Uh, not to keep the area from being developed, certainly not. Uh, development and process and progress are very important to us. But development in, in a very careful way that blends the modern with the traditional, the historical essence is preserved. And we believe that with the right kind of development, we could enhance both the future and the traditional. Thank you very much for allowing us this opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, any comments from members of the committee? Councilor Mark Squilla? Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for your testimony. Will the clerk please call the next witness? Mary Purcell, commenting on bill number 200094 and 200095. Mary Purcell? Remember, you may have to uh, unmute yourself by pressing star six, Mary Purcell. Uh, we may have lost Mary. Can you please call the next witness? Darnetta Ars. 
commenting on bill number 200144. Hello, Darnetta speaking. Hello. Hello, Darnetta. Hello, can you yes. hear us? Yes, I can hear yeah, you. How you doing, Darnetta? Okay. You Great. Can please start your, mm -hmm. touch your, start your testimony. What do I do? I just start talking? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You, you can begin. Yes. Good morning. This is Darnetta R.C. from the 29th Board, 9th Division. And I'm here to give my testimony about... Darnetta, are you still with us? Yeah. If you are listening to um, this broadcast on uh, channel 64, it's a little delayed, so you might have to mute it um, in order to make your testimony a little clearer. Darnetta, are you still there or did we lose you? Okay, we'll come back. Can the clerk please call the next witness? We have Queen Judith Robinson commenting on bill number 200144. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Queen Judith Robinson here testifying on bill number two. 00144. Any of you who were in city council in 2015 voted on a bill 150409. That was the bill that allowed PHA, our Philadelphia Housing Authority, to use eminent domain to take black people's property. I'm going to say that because I want to be clear on what I'm talking about here. As real estate value of land is was increasing, it's continued to increase M Ms. on Robinson? that very choice land. Yes. Queen yes. Robinson, are you are you also referring to Can you hear me? Are you referring Hello? to bill number two zero zero one four four? Yes, yes I am. That's how it started off. I'm here to testify on bill number two zero zero one four four. But what I'm doing is referring you all back to that because I don't want people to forget that land was taken by PHA using eminent domain. So yes, believe me, I'm gonna bring you up to speed on why I'm testifying today uh, on this land. This land is a small cho uh, portion, I would say a substantial portion of that land. See, I don't want anybody for to forget as we move this land around. I watch land all the time and the movement of it. So in that regard, getting back to this ordinance today, um, this is a changing of the zoning designation for certain areas of land. I wish the young lady, Miss Arcy, had spoken because then I could get better clarity on what's supposedly moving and what, what's, you know, happening here. Because in that area where we need a multi uh, housing approach, we need all types of housing. This appears from this a bill that this land is being designated single family. And I'm concerned about that because with the zoning code change of 2012, we thought we would have these new rules in place to reduce having to go to zoning hearing and that the community wouldn't have to meet as much uh, on these issues. Well, we find ourselves, because an area has been designated all for single family, when people come to do uh, other types of housing, which we need, we have to encounter them. Although we love meeting the developers and we love being doing our civic duty as it relates to uh, 
greeting the new folks coming to town and understanding how our community is changing, gentrification and all of that, it sort of uh, uh, puts us in a position where, you know, we have to meet so often and try to engage our community and all of that's important too. But we thought we were ratcheting down. So when we see a bill like this and, and then we call our planning office, the city uh, planning commission, and to be honest, they were really no help. Our fifth district planner was on vacation, and somehow the boundaries of this bill, which are very small and uh, wide, I should say, and, and supposedly was about a small uh, issue, becomes all of this borders as we see per this bill 200144. So I think it may need some amendments. Uh, our planner mentioned that he had some amendments to the bill. He didn't know whether they were going to be considered. He didn't have as much information to give me clarity as to why. Why is this being done? I'll listen for the next testimony, but I want to make sure when we're talking about poverty, when we're talking about uh, generational wealth, inclusion, and all those things, it was unprecedented in Philadelphia to take land from black people, and now we're trying to figure out five years later what to do, what's being done. I want to just keep you on point. I want to keep, uh, you know, keep, I, I'm the archivist. I'm keeping you all on point. What happened when? If any smart person in the future is looking to try to piece this all together, I want to refer them back to Bill 150409, and then they will know name and by deed what happened to the land the black people owned in Shawswood as the prices increase. I thank you all very much for your attention. I'll hang on and listen to the other's testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Queen Judith Robinson. And as always, we appreciate your historical context and approach as we address the issue of development and land use here in the city of Philadelphia. Um, Brett, could you see if the two uh, witnesses who were Is Darnetta Arce commenting on bill number 200144 still on the line? Darnetta. Yes, hello. Hi, is this yes. Darnetta Arce? Yes, it is. Hi. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much. You are connected. Okay, so I'll just start speaking. Hello? Yes. Yes, you can begin. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes. I am a resident from the 29th Ward to the 9th Division, which is between Jefferson and Thompson Street, um, between 24th and 25th. And the residents of that particular division, 9th Division, would like to have the area zoned as the RSA5 to decrease the number of multi family and two family properties as a right of approval. This area is being plagued with multi-family units and two family units, which is calling <clears throat> which is causing a problem for parking safety. And it also causes the opportunity for to reduce, I mean are causing a problem for also it's causing this neighborhood to be more transit because we have less opportunities for homeowners and there's more renters in the community so we are asking for the area to be a rsa5 councillor chairman you are on mute Darnetta, are you still there? I think we must have lost her. Any other witnesses to testify on public comment? That is it, Mr. Chairman. 
All right. Thank you very much. There being no further questions from members of this committee and no other witnesses to testify, I will ask if there anyone else present in this hearing whose name we have failed to call and that wishes to offer testimony on any of the bills being considered today. Hearing none, I want to thank all of the panels and witnesses for their participation today. We value your input. I now invite all panel witnesses to please disconnect from the meeting before we go into our public meeting. We will now pause the proceedings briefly as multiple participants leave the hearing. Is that the public meeting? We're about to go into the public meeting now. We are ready to go into public meeting when you are council chair. Mr. Chairman, I believe we are ready to go into the public. You're ready, everyone is left. Yes, this, sir. Conclu this concludes the public hearing of the committee. We will now go into a public meeting to consider the action to be taken on the bills before this committee today. We will now convene the public meeting. Will the clerk please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate that they are present when their names are called also say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Mark Squilla. Present here today to the committee rules committee meeting. Cindy Bass. Cindy Bass. I, thank you. I am present. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, for this very informative hearing and for the bills that we heard today. Thank you. David O. President, thank you very much for the hearing. Look forward to uh, continuing forward. Catherine Gilmore Richardson. I'm present, thank you so much. Bobby Heenan. Present, and in case of any kind of technical difficulties, I just want to be recorded as I on all bills. Maria Quinones Sanchez. Good morning, good morning, I am present. Curtis Jones Jr. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I am present and ready to go. And Brian O'Neill. And that is it for the roll, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Brett. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squilla for a motion on bill number 20018. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the bill number 20018 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation 
and further move that the rules of council be suspended as to miss the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Squiller seconds Councilman Jones seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 20018 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation. <clears throat> and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on Bill Number Two Zero 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 Nine Four. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the Bill Number Two Zero 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 Nine Four be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation, and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilwoman Catherine Gilmore Richardson and Maria Kiona Sanchez seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that the bill that bill number two zero 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 nine four be reported <coughs> a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Aye. ayes have it, and the motion carries. Somebody needs a drink of water. <laughs> the chair recognizes <laughs> Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200095. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer an amendment to bill number. Two zero 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 nine five. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of the committee. I move that the amendment of this bill, number two zero 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 nine five, be approved. Second. Second. Mm. The, the, the chair notes for the record that Councilman Captain Gilmore Richardson seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number two zero 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 nine five be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it and the motion carries and the amendment to bill number two zero 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 nine five have been approved. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on bill number two zero 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 nine five as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the bill number 200095 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilman David Oates seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that the bill number 200095 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200144. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer the amendment to bill number 200144. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of the committee. I move that the amendment of bill number 200144 be approved. Second. Mm. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Catherine Gilmore Richardson seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number 200144 be approved. All those in favor to the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries, and the amendment to bill number 200144 has been approved. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a, a motion on bill number 200144 as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the bill number 200144 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. 
The chair notes for the record that Councilman Jones seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that Bill Number Two Zero Zero One Four Four, as amended, be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. What? Aye. 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 Those aye. Opposed, the ayes have it and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squilla for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200160. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move, I offer the amendment to bill number 200160. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of the committee. I move that the amendment to bill number 200160 be approved. Second. Second. The chair recognized for the record that Councilman David O seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number 200160 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it, and the motion carries. And the amendment to bill number 200160 has been approved. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squilla for a motion on bill number 200160 as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the bill number 200160 as amended to be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Cindy Bass seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that the that bill number 200160 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squiller for a motion on bill number 200161. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the bill number 200161 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilman Cindy Bass seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 200161 be reported from this committee with the favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Councilman Squiller for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200260. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offered amendment to bill number 200260. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of the committee. I move that the amendment to bill number 200260 be approved. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilwoman Cynthia Bass seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number 200260 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion carries and the amendment to bill number 200660 has been approved. The chair recognizes Councilman Mark Squilla for a motion on bill number 200260 as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that bill number 200260 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the first reading of this bill next session of council. Second. The chair notes for the record that Councilwoman Captain Gilmore Richardson seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 200260 as amended be reported from this committee with the favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor 
of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it and the motion carries. This concludes the business before the Committee of the Rules today. And before uh, we close the meeting, I just want to thank all of my colleagues who um, have bills coming through this committee today. I know it's a lot of hard, hard, super hard work when you're um, working to do zoning overlays, when you're working to do development bills as it relates to working in partnership with the community and various um, interest groups as a whole. And so I just wanted to just, just acknowledge our hard work and our delicate dedication because I know it's a lot of hard work. So thank you very much. This concludes the Rules Committee hearing. God bless everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.